Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to take a look at the Cartoon FX Remaster Unity package. This is available on the Unity Store. Usually this alone costs $30 USD, but currently Unity has it on sale as part of a Lunar New Year bundle. The bundle as a whole costs $30 USD. So no, since that the whole bundle costs the same amount of what this package alone usually costs, I figured it was a good time to pick up the the, uni, the uh, Lunar New Year bundle and that it is on sale for, I think, about 25 more days as of the time of this recording. So let's take a look at what you get. Okay, so here we are in Unity. So what you first need to do is you need to install it. So once you've made the purchase, you go to Window, you go to Package Manager, and if you haven't already, up here, at least in 2020.1, you need to change this to packages and then my assets depending on what version you're using the selections might be slightly different here and then it comes up in alphabetical order so here it is cartoon fx remaster you click on download you should only have to do that once per machine so you download it once to your computer but for every project you want to use it in you need to import it into that project i already did that i don't want to waste your time So what do you get? You get two things mainly. First of all, let's go ahead and click on Game Object, Effects, and Particle System. So if you have a Particle System selected and you click on Tools, you have this new option, Cartoon FX Easy Editor. And what this does is you can edit the selected Particle System similar to what you would normally do in the Inspector. So you can do things like uh, if you change, say, Start Color, make it green. And then you do set start color, they turn green. Okay, so it's a lot like using the inspector. I'm not going to go through this because this is just trial and error. Like I've said before, when it comes to particle systems, it's like sculpting. You just start making changes and see what kind of effect you can get. I've already done some more specific tutorials about using particle systems, but if you purchase this, it's just a matter of trial and error to see what you like. And just know that a lot of these correspond to this. So we're going to get rid of that. The second thing that you get, and I feel that this is really the real reason to get this, is that it has a bunch of built-in assets that have a very stylized appearance to them, and you might find yourself just using those. Okay. So this is the folder that gets installed when you do the download and import. We've got three different versions, so we're going to use the remaster. As you can see, CFXR prefabs. So there's different prefabs, so like explosions. Okay. Double click on this, you got the explosion. Double click on this, explosion, and different types. That one's bigger, smaller, some fireworks, and then there's other ones. I'm not going to go through all these because I believe they, they already, uh, I think there's an interactive demo on the Unity site, but like there's liquid, so there's like lava. Zoomed in too close to, there we go. Water, there you go, and so on and so forth. So you just have all these different effects that you can use. So what would happen, and this is the real reason why I want to do this video, A, to give you a quick overview of what you get and how to use it, but the main thing is integration, because I think a lot of people see these Unity assets and they say, well, that looks cool, but how can I possibly use this with my project? That's really what I want to show you. Because if you're new to game design, the thought of using someone else's assets and how it integrates with your project may seem very alien. That's why we're going to go through this. Okay, so in short, what you would do, and I'm going to go through a very specific example. Say you have like a stick of dynamite, grenade, whatever. And when uh, it explodes, you want there to be a particle system. So what you would do is you would instantiate one of these at the point in which the grenade lands. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to create a, a quick scene, and then we'll show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and go to Game Object, 3D Object, and we'll just create a plane, just a plain old plane. Let's rotate around so we can get to the view of the camera. And let's just raise the camera and kind of lower it just so we get a good look at what we're going to be doing. Okay. 
So let's create an, a sphere. So game object, 3D object, and we'll do sphere. This would actually be the explosive. So grenade, dynamite, whatever. Okay. And let's see. So this does not have a rigid body, so it shouldn't move. Sphere it has a collider, but no rigid body, so it shouldn't move either. Okay. So let's, I don't want to get into all the mechanics of moving something around. So what we will do is we will add a rigid body. So add component, physics, rigid body, and we'll have it use gravity. That way it automatically will drop. So let's run this. Okay. So say this is the explosive, it's the bomb, whatever, and you want it to blow up upon collision. So what you would do is you would right click, create C sharp, and let's call this detonate. You click on the sphere, you drag and drop that script onto the sphere. You double click and open it up. We'll get rid of these. I've said before that if you see the door, double forward slash, you know that it's a remark and it's not executed. And we need a new section. This is going to be on, let's see. let's see. Actually, let's do on trigger, enter. I'll, I'll use the, I'll change one of them to a trigger. Doesn't have to be, but easy coding. So on trigger, enter. So you want to do two things. You want in, to instantiate an object. So first of all, we need to create a variable for that object. So this is going to be the explosion. So this is going to be the explosion prefab. So let's call this, so public, and this will be a transform because we're not going to be modifying any aspect of the particle system. We're just going to be placing it somewhere. So public transform, boom, OBJ. We'll save this. Uh, that should not cause an error, even though it's empty. Let's make sure. So sphere, there we go. So now what we want to do, we want to navigate again to where we saw those explosions. And it really doesn't matter which one we use. We'll use that one. So we go to sphere. Again, the boom object will take that prefab. We put it there. And we are almost done already. So now what we want to happen is I said I want it to be a trigger. So plane, let's see, let's give it convex and is trigger. So I believe that should be sufficient for the code to detect the collision. And what we'll do are two things, instantiate the boom object, so that particle system. Where do we want to instantiate it? We want to instantiate it at the location of the object that the script is attached to. The script is attached to the sphere, which in your game would be, again, the explosive, okay? So the way that you get the position of the object that is um, it's attached to is transform that position. And then we want to use rotation. I believe we can just use the boom objects rotation. And then we want to, at the same time, when there's a collision, we want to destroy the game object. So destroy game objects, a destroy game object will destroy the object the script is attached to. So just as this grabs the position that the script is attached to, this is destroying the object the script is attached to. So when the object the script is attached to collides with a trigger, it will instantiate the boom object at the object's position, but using the boom object's rotation, and this will destroy the game object, the sphere. So that should be all it takes to make this work. 
actually let's just raise this up a little bit so we don't blink and miss it. There you go. So that's about it. Really, there really isn't much more for me to show you. It's that easy to integrate it. Now, obviously, the camera is kind of close. You might want to scale that object, but that's really all there is to it. You're just taking these prefabs that they gave you and you are having them be instantiated when some event occurs. Like, for instance, maybe if it's the opposite, like say it's fireworks shooting into the sky, this would maybe be based on a timer. So this would shoot up into the air and then detonate. So I suppose we could quickly do that. So let's instead get rid of gravity. And we will instead, so we want to, let's base this on time. So trigger enter won't be necessary. So what we'll instead do is in the start section, we're going to say that when this object that it's attached to, the sphere, is instantiated, we want a timer to start and then we want the explosion to happen then because the fireworks is shooting up into the sky. Okay, so what we'll do, we first have to create that coroutine that we want to reference. So I E numerator and start FW for fireworks and then parentheses and then squiggly brackets and then yield return new. And although I try to explain everything, just know that you have to do this. What you really care about is this. Just type it out. It's it's required. I'm not going to go into a detailed explanation because obviously this is self-explanatory. Wait for a certain amount of time measured in seconds. We'll do two seconds. And now what we'll do is we'll move this stuff from there to there for two reasons. A, I'm lazy. Two, I noticed that people don't seem to realize that you can reuse code and that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, that this was not specific to this. This is just the trigger. This is just it decide on when to happen. You can have this happen based on time or whatever event you want. So in the start section, we're going to do start coroutine, parenthesis start fireworks fw parenthesis oops not that semicolon so this script is attached to the orb when the orb is instantiated the first thing it does it starts this coroutine this coroutine says wait two seconds then instantiate the boom object and then uh, at well at the same time destroy the object that this is attached to again this is attached to the orb but we want to do something else. We want this to move vertically in the air. So also in the start section, we'll do get velocity, oh, sorry, get component. And it is the rigid body that we attach to it. Dot velocity equals new vector three. And we don't want it to move along X. We want it to move along Y and we don't want it to move along Z. So that uh, positive two is vertically upwards on the Y axis. Now fireworks, you'd probably actually want it to start slower and then move faster, but this is just demonstrative purposes. So that means the last thing we have to do is change which boom object, because in this case we said we don't want it to be a, um, we don't want it to be uh, the, the, the cloud explosion. We want it to be one of the fireworks. So let's take this firework, see how that one works. And then let's pull the camera back a little bit. And then we'll actually rotate it up too, because now we want to see higher up. And if I didn't forget anything, what should happen now, gravity is not applying to this. We shut off gravity. So it should move up vertically. And then after two seconds, it should self-destruct and instantiate the fireworks. There we go. So again, you wouldn't want it to move that slow. More than likely, you want it to gain speed and that kind of thing. But 
I think that's about it for this video. I hope that this has been helpful. Uh, if you would be so kind, please uh, leave a like and a comment. I normally don't ask for that, but I've noticed that my channel views have really diminished lately and I really need to know what people are watching and what they think of it so I can make better content. So you don't have to, certainly it's your choice, but if you'd be so kind, it helps me determine what kind of content I should do. Anyway, so that should do it. So this is the Cartoon FX uh, uh, re-release and this should do it. So uh, have a good day and um, I hope this was helpful.